This next young man needs not much introduction. He's one of my mentors. He's a Louisiana Trump campaign co-chair, former state representative that has done many, many, many things that I cannot even begin to list for the state of Louisiana and our country. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Woody Jenkins. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rob Manus. It's great to be here. It was certainly an honor to serve as state chairman for Donald Trump. And what a great majority the people in Louisiana gave to our President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Thank you for all you did to make it a success. I wanted to mention for a second uh, Justice Hughes, who came up a while ago, and how significant his election was. It's been almost five years since he was elected to the state Supreme Court. But he was the first Republican in history from the Baton Rouge area ever elected to the Louisiana Supreme Court. And when he was elected, it shifted the balance of power where for the first time ever, the Republicans were in a majority on the state Supreme Court. Not that party means everything because we actually have a slightly higher conservative majority on the Supreme Court, but his election was very significant. And when he comes up for re-election, I guess it's perhaps next year, uh, we certainly want to support him if he's not in the meantime appointed to some higher judicial appointment, which would be good too. But thank you, Judge Hughes, for all you do uh, to bring justice uh, to our state. You know, today there's someone I haven't seen in a very long time, and I want to bring him up because he uh, was and is one of my best friends. He served with me in the House of Representatives over here for only four years. He was the only independent elected to the Louisiana House of Representatives in those times. And during those years, he was a great force for conservative values and independent thinking. And during that time, he and I were very concerned about our taxes being raised uh, through fees. You know, the government would adopt all these fees and it would pass the legislature by a majority vote instead of the two-thirds vote required by taxes. So one after the other, they would pass higher fees and not call it a tax. Well, he authored and I helped him pass a constitutional amendment to say that to raise fees, you have to have a two-thirds vote of the legislature as well. Good. And he has been an ardent supporter of Donald Trump since the beginning. And I want to ask Representative, former Representative Steve Gunn to come up and share the mic with me for a second and tell us about his experience during this campaign and why he supported Donald Trump. From Grant Parish, the independent voice, Representative Steve Gunn. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I know what you're thinking. Where would he find this character? But, <laughs> but, but I come from Montgomery up in the rural part of Grant Parish. Not that it's not all rural, but it, it, anyway, Woody and I were talking the other day after the election, and he said, said, what did you think about the presidential election? And I said, oh, it was great, but it got me in trouble. He said, how did he do that? I said, well, I celebrated. I got up on the roof of my house took the plug out of my shotgun and fired off a few rounds. <laughs> but but uh, uh, the, the, the police came and they, they said, they called me Mr. Steve. I was mayor up there 14 years, they all know me. And so they, they said, Mr. Steve, you gotta get down. They all think you're going crazy. I said, well, that's what they thought when I walked in the legislature 25 years ago. <laughs> Nothing new. Uh, and they said, the mayor's upset and the people are calling right and left. You got to get down. I said, oh, tell them to pipe down. I've just got two more boxes of shells. <laughs> they said, yeah, but Mr. Steve, you've been up there four days. <laughs> uh, I want to thank Woody for inviting me up here. But uh, it's, you know, we really need Donald Trump there. And my goodness, you know, Woody ought to be in the Senate. They stole it from him like they're trying to steal the White House from Donald Trump right now. And Rob Bannon ought to be the other senator. I'd feel a lot better. But I, I I'm going to say this, I'm going to sit down. Uh, my sheriff in Grant Parish, who happens to be my cousin, is doing a great job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he confiscated $460,000 worth of crystal meth the other day. 
and I said, where did he come from? From Mexico, from the cartels. I said, I said, my goodness, how many young lives will this have ruined? He said thousands. That's why we need Donald Trump. That's why we need a wall. Yes, I think my time's about to run up here. I've got to go back to Montgomery, so I'll see you. Thank you, Woody. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll tell you a story about Steve, actually about his grandfather. You know, we think about the corruption going on these days, and it's been going on since Louisiana began, but after the Civil War, during Reconstruction, the legislature passed uh, the Louisiana Lottery, and it became one of the most corrupt institutions in America. As a matter of fact, that's why Congress banned gambling or lotteries through the mail was because of the corruption of the Louisiana Lottery. And the legislature had given the Louisiana Lottery Company a 25-year license to operate a monopoly on the lottery. And when it came up for renewal, it was in the early 1890s, and Murphy Foster, the first Murphy Foster, was the governor. And he had been elected on an anti-gambling platform. But in the legislature, they were paying $30,000 a vote if you would vote to keep the monopoly for the Louisiana Lottery Company instead of abolishing it. Well, at that time, Steve Gunn's grandfather was in the legislature, and this was in the House chamber at the old state capitol. And when it came time on a roll call, they did it not electronically in those days, they called out uh, Representative Gunn. He, sort of like Steve there, he jumped up on top of his desk and at the top of his voice, he shouted, no! And the Louisiana Lottery Corporation was killed, so that corruption was ended. So the fight for honesty, for justice, continues. At times, the names change, the times change, but it's always human nature really is always the same. We, we're sinners and we always have to, to work for the best in our character. And even though any one of us makes a mistake, we have to still strive to be better. You know, I was right before the election, I was talking to one of my friends who was a former mayor. He's a strong Democrat, strong supporter of Hillary Clinton. And I was telling him why Donald Trump was going to win the election. And I was talking about what was really going on in America. You know, we have today, if you're not supporting the hard left, you're labeled a racist, a sexist, a homophobe. An Islamophobe, and they've got so many phobias I can't keep up with them. But the whole idea on the Democratic side is to put together groups. It may be women, it may be Latin, it may be gays, it may be any number of different groups. And if you listen closely at the rhetoric, and if you read Marx, you will find that it's all Marxist Leninist, Leninist rhetoric. Class warfare. They're trying to pit one American against another, one group. Let's talk about race for a second. I hate it when I hear someone say, I'm proud to be black or I'm proud to be white. Listen here, your race is an accident of your birth. You had absolutely nothing to do with it. There's no reason to be proud and there's no reason to be ashamed based on your race or where you were born or anything like that. We're not responsible for that. What we're responsible for is our actions. We're responsible for what we do. And I love what President Trump said. He said, if you love America, if your heart is filled with patriotism, there's no room for racism in your thinking. And I believe him on that, and I'm so proud of him. And I think that's true, not only if you love our country, if you love God, you don't look at people in that way. But I'm talking to my friend about why we were going to win, and I said, you've lumped together all these different groups. You hope that you can somehow put together a majority. You can put the Muslims with the gays. Now think about that, and you think about all the tenets of Islam against homosexuality. And you're going to put the women's movement with the Muslims, and you think about all the things they believe against abortion and against the rights of women. This is, a t this is a coalition that's just untenable and they're trying to hold it together. But I said, you've left out one group, one important group in your coalition, and it's why you're gonna lose. And he said, well, what's, what have we forgotten? 
I said, you've forgotten the workers. You've forgotten the working men and people, working men and women of this nation. And I said, that's what's going to defeat you in the heartland of America. And sure enough, if you look at Ohio and Pennsylvania and Michigan and Wisconsin, you'll see that working people, including millions of union members who had been voting Democrat before, left them, but really the Democratic Party left them, left the workers. And so who, who are the Republicans today? The Republicans are the working people and the small business owners. Now the big business and the wealthy, they're on the Democrat side with the people on the receiving end of government. Somebody asked me, what would you do in North Baton Rouge, where I'm from, where we have so many problems? I'd say, help people there, start a business, own a business, because your life will change, your perspective will change. There's just a few things that will change a perspective. A perspective. Accepting God or Jesus as your heavenly Father. That will change your life. Getting married will change your life. Having children will change your life. Starting a business will change the way you look at the world. I said, and as far as you being a Democrat, you start a business, you're not going to be a Democrat much longer. You'll be a Republican because you'll be paying those taxes and meeting those regulations. So we have together today a winning coalition. It's the people who are working. We want to grow that coalition. And how do we do it? Now, I'm going to take a little bit different view on the media. You know, from the time I was a small boy, I recognized that I needed to communicate my ideas to other people. And so I was in the school newspaper in elementary school. And then when I was in high school, I became a radio newsman and then a TV newsman and announcer at Channel 9 here in Baton Rouge. And then I started the North Baton Rouge Journal with my wife, Diane. We were, we've been in media our entire lives, even though I served in the legislature for 28 years. Today we publish the Capital City News and the Central City News. And I want to say this about media. The media is just a person or a group of people who get together to share news and information. The most important thing I'd like you to take away from today is that you are the media. It's not somebody else. And that thing you're holding in your hand, that iPhone, is the most powerful invention probably ever in terms of communication. Right now, my iPhone is sitting there transmitting this event live to the world. It would have taken millions and millions of dollars to be able to buy all the cameras and, and have all the satellites and be able to broadcast to the world. Technologically, it really is not feasible. But with that phone you hold in your hand, you can communicate to anyone in the world. And that is power. So use your power. Use Facebook. Somebody says, well, I don't like Facebook. Learn to like it. Because it is the most powerful way you have right now to communicate to large numbers of people. Use it to send out news and information. You don't have to talk about where we're going shopping today or what time we're going to bed. Talk about the important ideas that affect our nation. And you will have a tremendous impact. There will be tens of thousands of people who see this rally today because of that iPhone sitting there broadcasting on Facebook Live. So learn the technology and use it. The big time mainstream media is being left behind. Rush Limbaugh right now reaches more people every day than the three major newscasts on ABC, CBS, and NBC combined. And guess who else does? President Donald Trump. People say, oh, he should quit tweeting. Are you crazy? He's, he's going to shut down the largest way in America to reach right into people's phones every day whenever he, he has something he wants to communicate. I can tell you they can call for him to do that all day long, but he's not going to do it. He's going to keep communicating. You keep communicating. You spread your ideas. What we are doing is we are submerging the mainstream media with our voices. So continue to do that.
Today was his best tweet, someone said. All right, we're going to see. I'm, if he tweets it, I'll tell you what, I tend to believe it. I'll believe it until I prove, they're prove, me, prove him wrong, and that hasn't happened very often. So uh, I want to say, I also saw somebody coming in here, Roger Villery. Did I see Roger? Our state Republican chairman, Roger Villery, thank you so much for all you do. He's done a tremendous job. And look at what we have since he's been Republican chairman. We have all of our statewide elected officials except the governorship. We have all except one congressman. We have large majorities in the House and Senate. Now what we need to make sure is that we have conservative majorities in the House and Senate, because that will make a huge difference. Thanks to all of you for coming, and I want to turn it back to Rob Maness, and thank you, Rob, for putting together this great rally.